Mario Kart 8 Deluxe modding is starting to really take off, thanks to New Tool Track Studio, and with each course I play, I am more and more impressed. Some tracks are completely original, while others bring back ideas from old ones, for better or worse. Somehow, Mushroom Peaks returned. Regardless, today I'm playing the Egg and Triforce Cups of the game's first ever track distribution, Sitbar CT Pack. And if you want to catch these episodes live while I'm recording them, then you can head on over to twitch.tv slash gameblock underscore. With that out of the way, let's roll the intro and start the races. Hello everyone, it's Jacob with the Game Block. Today, we are playing more of Sitbar CT Back, and we are finally on episode 5. There's only one episode left after this, and I can't wait to see what kind of tracks we are going to be playing today. Last time, some of them were pretty good, and a few of them were a little bit iffy, but overall, we've had so many good tracks so far, and I can't wait to play some more. So, let's get into our first race. But before we start, let me just fill you in on how this works if you haven't seen any of the other episodes. First, we play the tracks in a Grand Prix. Then we go into time trials and we explore them in case we missed anything in our first playthrough. And finally, we rank them. Then we move on to the second cup of the episode, and then that's the end of the video. Hopefully that answers any questions you might have. And now, let's get into the Egg Cup. So, for our first race in the Egg Cup, we have GCN Mario Circuit by Insidious NX, and this is looking really nice. It seems like the model has been heavily altered to fit Mario Kart 8, and the texture work is looking super nice here too. So is the lighting. We don't have custom music, but that's fine because this is replacing GCN Yoshi Circuit, which has the same music as this course in Mario Kart Double Dash. So we've got the jazzy Mario Kart 8 version, and we got a shiny change up over there, though it's not as shiny as the last ones in the other videos, sadly. We've got a Mario Motor sign over there, I think that is actually something from GCN Yoshi Circuit. And we've got the Toad Houses in the distance, and I forgot to mention, those Mario letters look super sharp. I feel like most of this course is actually custom modeled, or at least it's a heavily edited version of the GameCube model, because this is looking super nice. I love the custom texture work as well. This is just incredible graphically. This is really just a perfect port of the track in my opinion. So that was GCN Mario Circuit by Insidious NX. And that was a really cool course. Overall, I have zero complaints. I can't think of any way that course could be better. So now let's move on to our next course. And now we have Sonic Adventure Deluxe Twinkle Circuit by Zanderoni, I believe. Not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but this looks very interesting. If I'm not mistaken, this is actually a Sonic Adventure stage, and it's been ported over into Mario Kart 8 as a track. I've never actually played the original Sonic Adventure. I've played a little bit of Sonic Adventure 2, but I'm excited to see how this plays. And we've got the custom music as well. It sounds super nice. One thing I don't really like about this is after a lot of the jumps, you can't really see where you're going. So if it's too close to a turn, you're gonna probably run into the wall. Oh no. What? <gasps> yes! Blue Shell Dodge! That was totally intended! I meant to do that. Definitely. Sadly, there are no double items on this course, which is interesting. And that was Sonic Adventure Deluxe Twinkle Circuit by Zanderoni. And overall, it was really fun to play. I feel like it's a really interesting concept to pour a Sonic level into an actual Mario Kart track. I will say there wasn't a whole lot of detail. I feel like if a few more background assets were thrown in there, it would bring a lot more life to the course. But from a pure driving standpoint, it works really well. So now let's move on to our third course. So now we have Somnom Labyrinth by BL. And this is looking really interesting. And we don't have any custom music, which is sad. We just have the Dragon Driftway music, which is fine. We do have a custom minimap, however, and it's scaring me. Like, it, it, that is complicated. Going for the double here. Oh boy, what is what is happening? Ah, ah, wah. Ah. Oh, okay, okay. I like the placement of the double items on this course. It, they're really a lot harder to get than the other items. I feel like that's something that a lot of these custom tracks have done really well. I really like the split path on this. 
it really adds a lot to the track. And I forgot to mention the anti-gravity as well is incredibly well done, especially because of how hard it is to do anti-gravity in Track Studio. That was Somnom Labyrinth by BL, and I overall loved that course graphically. It was pretty darn good, and it just overall had a great feel in terms of track design. Let's just move on to the final course of the Egg Cup. Okay, and our final course... Mayro, look, I try, I try to shout you out whenever one of these courses is in the track pack because you're one of my favorite creators. Why did you have to remake Mushroom Peaks? Why? For those of you who don't know, Mushroom Peaks by Mayro is originally by Mr. Bean 3000 VR, I believe is his name, and it's one of the most infamous Mario Kart Wii custom tracks. So let's see if Mayro, aka Newa Kart, has made it somewhat bearable. And we do have custom Mushroom Peaks music, is, which is actually more than I can say about the course in CTGP, and this is actually playing somewhat well. An enjoyable Mushroom Peaks? I didn't think it was possible. What? Okay, well, there's there's Mushroom Peaks for you. So graphically, this is just using the Mario Kart Wii model, and it actually doesn't look half bad with Mario Kart 8's lighting, especially because some of the assets from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe were used instead of just the Mario Kart Wii assets, like the mushrooms, and that's kind of janky. This is definitely a lot better than the original Mushroom Peaks, but it is still janky. And that was Mushroom Peaks by Mayro. It's still Mushroom Peaks, so it is definitely still incredibly janky, but I think this is probably the best version of Mushroom Peaks we have. Does that mean it's good? That's very debatable. <laughs> but now let's move into time trials to explore these courses, and then we will rank them. So right off the bat, this is definitely custom modeled, at least to some extent, because that tree, for one, is super high poly. These question mark blocks, I don't think were in the original, so the fact that this is custom modeled makes it even more impressive on how good this looks. So I think a lot of these assets in the background are from Mute City and Big Blue. I think some of them also might be from the Rainbow Road in the base game, but I'm pretty sure they are actually all from the F-Zero tracks. Yo, there's a shortcut here! Oh, I just missed it at the end, but that is a really cool inclusion. This is... This looks like there's been so much thought put into this track. These custom boost panel textures, those are really cool. And just overall, the track just looks really sick. It just is so much better than the Mario Kart Wii version. So that was the Egg Cup. And now we are going to rank all four courses, starting with last place, going into first place. And last place, sadly, has to go to Mushroom Peaks by Mayro. I will give credit where credit is due. The custom textures and everything actually look pretty nice in Mario Kart 8's engine. The custom boost panel textures are pretty sick. You didn't even have to include that, but you did. That is great, but <laughs> it's still Mushroom Peaks. By definition, Mushroom Peaks is janky. So this is the absolute best you could have made this course, but it's, it's still Mushroom Peaks, so it's going in last. Then in third place, we have Sonic Adventure Deluxe Twinkle Circuit by Xanderoni. It played really well, but some of the tricks off of the ledges, if you trick, then you'll just go flying into a wall because you can't see the wall while you're going up the slope. So that's a little bit of a problem. Otherwise, the layout is really nice. It's just there aren't a lot of background assets, so there just isn't a lot of life to the course. I feel like if more background assets were added, it would definitely feel a lot better to play. But for the time being, it just really feels kind of empty. Then in our second place track, we have Somnom Labyrinth by BL. This was an incredible track. It played amazingly, it was scaled really well, and graphically it looked super cool, and the alternate paths were really cool as well. But the only reason it didn't get first place is because Insidious NX made GCN Mario Circuit, which was if I am not mistaken, almost completely custom modeled, and the custom texture work as well looked impeccable. Just, wow, chef's kiss. That's callback to episode one, by the way, if you didn't know. Anyway, it just felt really nice to drive. It was scaled incredibly well, and it just, it worked. The track just worked well. It felt like something that should be in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 
I loved it. So that was the Egg Cup. So now let's move on to the Triforce Cup and play the courses over there. But you know what's even more impeccable? Chef's Kiss callback to episode 1 than GCN Mario Circuit? A subscription to the channel! That made absolutely no sense whatsoever, but please just subscribe to the channel. You get notified whenever I upload a new video like this one, and it supports the channel for me. Only a very small percentage of you all who watch my videos are subscribed, so why don't we just try to boost that number up? Thanks to everyone who's already subscribed, and thanks to everyone who's subscribing now. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the Triforce Cup. And first up, we have 3DS Mario Circuit by Baconberg. And this is one of my favorite Mario Circuit tracks, so I can't wait to see what you did with it, Baconberg. And overall, it's looking really nice graphically right now. Shading and lighting-wise, it looks super nice as well. Textures seem to have been upscaled, which is great. We've got custom music as well. Oh, these trees are looking kind of kind of wide. And the custom music is not the Toad Circuit music we have from the Booster Course Pass, which is interesting. It's a completely new remix, which is much appreciated. And the, the glider doesn't work. That is, uh, that's not good. It scaled really well as well. I feel like there were definitely changes not only made to the model aesthetically, but also to help it play better. And I think that just because this section I feel like is probably wider because all these trees are super wide. But I feel like this certainly did the course justice. Oh, the glider actually worked that time. That's interesting. And uh, once again, the glider didn't work. I heard the sound effect, but it just didn't go, which is interesting. That was 3DS Mario Circuit by Baconberg. In my opinion, that is by far the best Baconberg track we have had yet. I absolutely loved it. Overall, it just felt so much fun to drive. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this course. So now let's move on to our second one. And now we have 3DS Rainbow Road by Crayonia. This is one of my favorite Rainbow Road tracks as well. Interestingly enough, Mario Kart 7 has some banger tracks. But it looks like it's a lot darker than it should be. Almost like it's like... Rainbow Road, After Hours. That was just ridiculous. But we have the custom music. It sounds great for, I'm just gonna call this Rainbow Road After Hours now. This is cemented as the new name for this custom track until the lighting's fixed. Rainbow Road, After Hours. Though I will say the track itself is very bright, which is interesting. The area on the moon below and the areas around the start certainly look darker than they should be. <laughs> Oh, come on. I was in the middle of humming my music. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, and they use the floating chain chomp balls from N64 Rainbow Road. That is a super nice touch. And overall, this course is playing really well. I'm loving the custom music, though the lighting does definitely feel a little bit off. And it just, it really takes away from the majesty of the course. And Waluigi just sniped me at the end. Oh, come on. I am not getting fourth. No. Third. Thank you. Well-deserved third place. That was a great track. It was pretty solid, but the lighting definitely took it down a notch. And now we have Yogurt Skyway by Lalo Snooky, and this is looking very interesting. All these tracks today have been super bright. And we've got the Sky Garden banner at the front. This is supposed to be yogurt, I'm assuming, though it looks a lot like ice cream, so I'm assuming it's all frozen yogurt. This wouldn't be a bad track to race on in real life. I'm starting to get hungry now. Okay, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? So the off-road's a little janky. Good to know. And we've got the cherry blossom trees over here as well. Those look super nice. If I'm not mistaken, those are either custom assets or those might actually appear in the Animal Crossing stage. And I also just realized this is the archway from Sky Garden. They repurposed that beautifully. Overall, the track just works really well. It's scaled nicely. It feels fun to drive. Graphically, it looks pretty darn good as well. It's pretty high poly. The only thing that takes it down a notch is this really janky off-road. And we don't have any custom music, it's just using the Ice Ice Outpost music. So that was Yogurt Skyway by Lalo Snooky, and overall, the course played really well. The only thing that I didn't really like about it was that off-road, but other than that, it is really nicely done. I love the background assets as well. But now, let's move on to our fourth and final course, of this cup and this episode and for our final course we have super mario sunshine blooper serving safari also by Lalo snooki and this they took the blooper stage from super mario sunshine and they made it into a mario kart 
8 Deluxe track. I cannot believe this. This is such a crazy idea, and I am all for it. I love it. And we've got the Rupees as well from the Legend of Zelda course because this replaces Hyrule Circuit. I really like the seaweed that are on some parts of the course. That, I don't believe is custom modeled. I think that actually might be from Dolphin Shoals, but they fit really nicely here as well. I like the attention to detail with those. So that was Super Mario Sunshine, Blooper Surfing Safari. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it, but I just love the concept of this course. It was really fun to play as well. It was scaled really well. And overall, it was just a really solid course. So now let's move on to time trials to explore these courses, and then we will rank them. And that shortcut... I feel like these bushes over here are not that good of a decision to have just because the shortcut that's over here, you have to take it with exactly this angle, otherwise you'll just go straight into the bushes. I feel like if some of those were removed, that would be good, especially because we already have this barrier right here. I don't see why that can't just be the normal barrier. So with the lighting on this course not being super good, you can really tell that a lot of the course is a 3DS model, like with how low poly it is. And normally with a 3DS model, you can't really tell that if you put good lighting on. But the lighting on this course is definitely lacking, which is really holding it back in my opinion, because the original version of this course was one of the greatest Rainbow Roads that we have had. It's really a shame to see it not really done justice entirely. So right off the bat, I just realized, I forgot to mention, other than the Sky Garden loop we have over here, there are a lot of Sky Garden assets in the background, like the Beanstalks, and there are some of the just regular vines along some of the background, and of course we have the Sky Garden Paratroopers, so this seems to be taking a lot of inspiration from Sky Garden, and it fits really well in this course. Oh, whoa, what happened? What happened? What happened? I was reversing to see if I could turn and get up on the sides. Okay. Black, you got me. And that was the Triforce Cup. So now that we're done with all those courses, let's rank them. Starting with last place, going into first place. And last place, sadly, has to go to 3DS Rainbow Road, which is really a shame. It's one of my favorite Rainbow Roads. It really dropped the ball in the graphical department. The lighting just does not work well with this course. And if you put lighting on a 3DS model right, then you're able to really mask the fact that it's low poly. And I'm sorry, Crayonia, you didn't do that correctly. I loved your Wario Shipyard course, but this course certainly has not lived up to the expectations set by that one. Then in third place, we have Super Mario Sunshine Blooper Surfing Safari. I love the concept of this course. It was so much fun to drive. It was actually scaled really well, and it works well as a Mario Kart course. It just really, again, lacks in the grapple department, and it doesn't really have that much variety because you're just going around pretty much in a loop. There's not really a lot of banked curves at all, but I love the concept of this course. But then in our second place spot, we have Yogurt Skyway by Lalo Snooky, and graphically this course looked really good. It was scaled really well. It felt great to play, but the only problem I have with it is that little piece of off-road on the curve up to the kind of top area. It's just really janky with its collision, and if you hit it wrong, you can fall off that entire curve losing yourself so much progress and it just really takes away a lot from the enjoyment of the course but other than that it was really well done but then of course in our first place spot we have 3ds mario circuit by baconberg i loved this course graphically it looked really good it felt really nice to play it was scaled really well i absolutely loved the course it played well it was graphically amazing and i really just love 3ds mario circuit it's one of my favorite courses of all time in mario kart but what do you all think do you think my opinions are completely wrong do you think i am an absolute idiot let me know down in the comments below. Don't be too mean, though. I don't, I don't want to be murdered in the comments, please. And that's pretty much it for the video. If you liked it, then why don't you drop a like? And while you're down there, you can sub. You get notified whenever I upload a new video like this, and it supports the channel for me. It's a win-win. And if you want to catch these episodes live while I'm recording them, there's still one left after this, and you can find that on twitch.tv slash gameblock underscore, and it should be streaming the day that this video comes out when you all see this. So you will get to see the finale a week early if you go over to the Twitch. But that's pretty much it for this video. Drop a like, sub, follow on the Twitch, and I'm Jacob with the Game Block, signing off.